What an amazing day for a drive in Austin, Texas. So the whole point behind videos like this, guys, is I am going to be your tour guide. I'm going to take you around different parts of Austin, Texas, show you what the drive is like, because if you're looking to move to Austin um, or one of the Austin suburbs, Bastrop, Dripping Springs, San Marcos, Georgetown, any of them, I've done a lot of videos on, on the suburbs here. If you're looking to move to this area, you need to know how to get around. And that's what I'm doing in these. So today we are, I'm around. We are in the arrivals at the Austin Bertram International Airport, and I'm going to take you on a ride to Oak Hill, which is in southwest Austin. But what I'm going to show you is basically how to get from the airport to any part of Austin by showing you all the exits that you would take and things like that. So as we're rolling through the arrivals here, which, by the way, um, you can also drop people off on this lower level at the arrivals. Technically, the departures are up on the second level above us, but you can use either for that little pro tip insider tip here. Um, but but as you're leaving out on arrivals, whether it's in an Uber or a taxi, this would be the direction that you are taking. And then right over here from the left where this car is coming out to my left, um, that's where you would be coming out from the rental car return. So all of these areas are exiting into the exact same spot. So whether you've got a rental car, an Uber, a taxi, or a bus, this is the path you're taking. So we are leaving Austin Bertram International Airport right now and you're gonna have three lanes that you can choose from and this guy's gonna um, try to I'm not sure where he's going but anyway trying to make that u-turn by the way that is does make a circle over there to the left so you can just do endless loops in the airport while you're waiting to pick somebody up um, but all three of these lanes are going out to Highway 71 the right lane is gonna go east on 71 to Bastrop Smithville uh, you can get to Houston College Station all of those areas if you go right here the left two lanes are both gonna go west on 71 and are gonna take us into different parts of Austin and you can see we've got that nice Austin sign right over there it's amazing um, by the way don't expect great signage in and around the airport it is one of my major pet peeves of this airport if you are unfamiliar with it that's the reason I do these videos because it will drive you up the wall and you're gonna end up in a wreck or something else I mean going in while ago um, you know people are cutting across three or four lanes of traffic because they missed a sign and they're just losing their mind so again that's that's the reason I do these videos but um, oh, by the way, if this content is interesting to you, or if you're thinking about moving to Austin, you may want to subscribe to the channel also. Um, I do a lot of videos like this and also talk a lot about houses and subdivisions and suburbs and things like that. But we're heading under um, 71 right now. And there's a sign. We finally see a sign that says downtown Austin. Okay, great. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it after we already have to get to this point to see that. Um, and by the way, there is a Starbucks there, a Jack in the Box, um, a couple of other restaurants up ahead of us, I believe, is an In-N-Out burger. So if you're hungry after the plane, um, you can get a quick bite to eat here as well. Uh, or is it? Nope. I thought it was five guys, but that's the little guys moving. So we're going to jump up on this ramp to Highway 71. Now 71 changes names a few times as we go through, but 71 actually stays a part of it. Um, and if you can see, that is the Austin skyline right over there. Um, so we're on 71. 71 is also going to become at 1.290 and Ben, uh, Ben White, uh, Ben White was the old surface road before the, uh, before the freeway was built, but it's all the same thing. So if, if people are talking about any of those, you'll know, okay, it's the same road. All right. We are at four lanes and soon to be five lanes right here. And the reason that it is, is because 183, which is another major Texas highway, um, north cuts off to our right here there's a split where two lanes go right on 183 three lanes go straight on 71 um, into into austin so if you're going to go to the north side of austin georgetown uh salado taylor hutto any of those and you're not going to take the toll which is behind us you would take a right here on 183 and exit to the right this bypasses on the east side of Austin and takes you up kind of to the to the north side of downtown. 
I'm staying to the left here. It says Lano there. L-L-A-N-O is Lano in Texan. Um, it's Yano in Spanish, but it's Lano in Texan. Um, and this is also going to take you to, uh, to the south, south side of Austin. And then this exit here, you see south to Lockhart. That's 183 south, like I mentioned. Uh, 183 is a major highway in Texas, and that, that will take you down to the Texas coast. And Lockhart is, is one of the major suburbs that's growing very quickly right now. It'll also take you down to Ludley. Um, I mentioned the toll road behind us, 130. That runs to the east of the airport. That's where you'll, where you'll find Tesla um, on the way out to Bastrop. And 130 loops around Austin. Um, there's a, a part that cuts off that is Loop 45 that goes to I-35 at Buda and then 130 will actually take you all the way down to Seguin which is on the east side of San Antonio at I-10 um, and then north it'll take you all the way up to Georgetown and joins back into I-35 on the north side of Austin at Georgetown so right now we are on 71 and it is also Ben White technically at this location uh, Montopolis Drive takes you around the east side of Austin, so you could exit there. This is where one of the Texas Department of Transportation offices is. By the way, if you need a um, Waffle House, we just passed a Waffle House back there. So there's a Waffle House on the southeast side of Austin, one of my favorite breakfast spots. Don't argue with me, it's amazing. Give me those pork chops and some uh, hash browns. Mmm, good stuff. Now, there's a lot of hotels that have popped up in this area between downtown and the airport. Um, and this is not the most direct path to downtown. Um, 183 is the most direct path. And there's a road that cuts off there called 7th Street and Airport, uh, Airport Boulevard. Those are the most direct paths. Um, some of the other roads that we're passing here, Burleson Road, Woodward, Todd Lane. All of this area is really getting a name for... Um, Kind of commercial and uh, warehouse space. There's a lot of businesses going in on this part, in, in this part, just like you normally see kind of close to the airport. That's why you see also a lot of the apartments, uh, storage buildings, and, and hotels in this area. I'll talk about a few of my favorite things in the area. There's a brewery tucked in down over here south of us to the left. That's called Meanwhile Brewing. It's got a great outdoor space, great indoor space, and some of the best barbecue that you will find in Austin, but you won't really find it anywhere on like Texas Monthly and stuff. Uh, it's called, oh my gosh, now I'm going to have to think about it because I just forgot it. Anyway, it is at Meanwhile Brewing. Uh, Distant Relatives is the barbecue place. Uh, really, really great barbecue trailer. Um, when you're there, see if Graham is working. Graham's a good friend. Um, and I'm not saying their barbecue is great because of Graham. I mean, the guy that, that owns it um, was nominated for a Beard Award. The guy could cook food, but Graham works there and, and uh, helps. He's a, one of the assistant chefs. Uh, but if Graham is there, tell him Chris said hi. Now, this next little um, exit area, and I, I say that because there's a lot of exits happening, it's going to be I-35. So I'm going to slide over to my left lane. I am passing. I-35 runs right next to downtown Austin um, and it is a, a major interstate highway in fact it's an international highway it goes from Mexico to Canada and it keeps going into both from what I understand I've never been into Mexico or Canada on I-35 but you can get there uh, both directions so <clears throat> you would exit here if you're going south on 35 if you're going south you would go to Kyle, Buda, San Marcos, New Braunfels, uh, Schertz, Cibolo, San Antonio, um, man, I, I can't remember the roads out or the towns after that. If you go north, you're going to go Austin, uh, Fl Round Rock, Pflugerville, Georgetown, Salado, Gerald, uh, Belton, T uh, Temple, Waco, Dallas, Fort Worth, Hillsboro, all of that stuff is to the north. And I didn't get all of those in order, but that's the main ones. So all the spaghetti crossing over the top of us is I-35 going north and south. Okay, our next road here is South Congress. That actually goes all the way to downtown Austin. Notice we're seeing a little bit of traffic here. Guys, it is about 
four, let me see what time it is, right about four o'clock on a Wednesday afternoon. So traffic is starting to back up. I was doing 65 until that point. Um, this where, where what, what this road is up here, that's I-35 coming from downtown and emptying out here onto 71. Um, it is also 290. So it's a weird little configuration. I'll talk about that in a little bit, but um, this road 71 actually reduces to two lanes here. And so people always hit their brakes because we have two lanes merging with us. So this always backs up even earlier than normal traffic. It should open up here in a little bit, but just kind of be aware uh, as you're coming through, try to get in your left lane because that's the most free flowing lane. Um, anyway, Congress Avenue or South Congress, they're also known as SoCo by the people who call it SoCo. I don't know why you would have to do that, but anyway, um, it goes to downtown Austin, it will actually take you and run directly into the state capitol. Um, so that's, you know, Congress right here, South First Street also is a major northwest or north-south road. Um, and it also goes all the way to uh, the lake, Lady Bird Lake or, or Town Lake, which is the Colorado River. Um, that road will also take you. All of these roads, though, do have a lot of stoplights. So you may not want to take them into downtown unless you work off of, off of one of them at some point. Um, so South Congress here, then South First. And then the next one would be South Lamar, which also takes you all the way to the lake. And then on the north side of the lake becomes North Lamar and will take you all the way up past 183 on the north side of downtown. So uh, that's kind of the north-south roads there. Now, we are on technically at the same time, 71, which goes out to Lano and into the hill country. Ben White, which is the old main road here, the, the old surface street before it was a freeway, and also 290. Um, I know, a little bit confusing, but the reason it is, 290 comes into Austin from Houston on the northeast side, hits I-35, turns south with I-35, and then turns west here where I-35 and uh, 71 meet, and then 290 will, like I said, uh, go out through Oak Hill to Dripping Springs, Johnson City, and Fredericksburg, and they keep going out west. Now, this next little mix here is gonna be South Lamar and also Loop 360. Loop 360 goes around the west side of Austin um, through Eanes ISD, a very popular uh, school district and Westlake. Um, now the downside about Capital of Texas or Loop 360 as they call it, is there's also stoplights on Loop 360. So it's not really a loop that gets you anywhere very quickly. Um, Mopac will get you to the north side of Austin faster than Loop 360 will. So just keep that in mind. Um, but speaking of Mopac, you can also take this exit here on Loop 360, Capital of Texas Highway, and that's the quickest way to get to Mopac on the west side of downtown Austin from the airport. But you can also, and that, that would be if you're going north on Mopac. If you're going to go south on Mopac, you would stay here on 71, 290 Ben White, and you would take this exit here, um, Mopac, or I'm sorry, the next exit past this, uh, to Loop 1 South to get down to uh, Slaughter Lane. Uh, Circle C is, what, is the major uh, subdivision down there. Um, and it would also take you to like Avanya, Gray Rock Golf Club and down into Hayes County in 1826. If you're trying to get to Driftwood, go eat at the Salt Lake or something like that. Um, that would be South Mopac. This exit here, Brody Lane and Southwest Parkway. Brody Lane goes south from Ben White 71 here. Um, and there's a there's a lot of retail and shopping. This area is known as Sunset Valley. It is its own little city in here. Um, and it is full of retail and shopping. Uh, if you can find a house in Sunset Valley, really, really nice area to live, big lots, older houses. Um, it's usually gonna cost you north of a million to move into this area though. So that's what that budget looks like in this area. This is also where you're gonna find Academy, Best Buy, um, Sam's Club, Specs is a large liquor store, Home Depot, Lowe's, all of those types of things are gonna be here in Sunset Valley. All right, that exit right there to the right, that is Mopac South that I was telling you about a while ago to get to Circle C. Um, that, that overpass went in about 12 years ago. Uh, it used to just dead end, Mopac did at one point when I was living here, so pretty interesting. Uh, but that's how you get to Circle C, and we are continuing on 290 71. 
if you're keeping score, it is no longer Ben White. Um, ben White ended right there at uh, on the other side of Mopac. Um, so this freeway is going to end here in a little bit in southwest Austin at an, air, at an area called the Y, which is Oak Hill. Um, but they are currently working on extending this freeway out towards Dripping Springs. Um, and I've got another video about Dripping Springs coming into Austin that talks all about that extension project and what it looks like. Um, by the way, there's a major hospital here, Baylor Scott and White, if you do need the hospitals right here to our left as you're living down here or coming to this area. Um, to our right is the area, uh, Southwest Parkway was the same exit as Brody, and that's the Southwest Tech Corridor. So we've got major tech companies in there. That's also where I, I think Freescale is there. NVIDIA, I, I believe, used to be there. Um, I'm not sure what the names change sometimes, so I'm not sure what all the companies are though. Um, but that's the Southwest Tech Corridor. Um, Intel is on Mopac North, just to our, our north here. So Intel's pretty close. It's kind of the beginning of that Southwest Tech Corridor. So that's the area about a mile to our right right now um, on Southwest Parkway. Um, as we're, we're gonna hit some traffic here, this is where the freeway used to end and where that, uh, where that overpass is gonna start. Now, some of these other roads that we're coming up to, and since we're coming into Oak Hill, um, I, you know, we're gonna have this traffic. I'll talk through some of this area. <clears throat> um, the roads would be, William Cannon is gonna be the next one that we go to or that we get to in terms of stoplights, and that's what's backing this up. And then after William Cannon is the Y. Um, the reason it's called the Y is because that's where 290 and 71 split. So 71 is going to split off to the northwest. And like I said, it's going to go to Lano. But before it gets to Lano, you're going to go through Bee Cave, which is a very popular suburb. Um, it is uh, where Lake Travis ISD is. Lake Travis has had a great run with athletics. I mentioned Eanes and Westlake High School. Same, really great run with athletics, especially football over the last few years. So 71, if you take a right at the Y, um, will take you to B Cave, will take you to Lakeway, um, which is 620, another loop that doesn't really loop because there's a lot of stoplights. Um, but again, they call it Loop 620. Um, and it takes you up to Cedar Park and then also north even beyond that uh, to uh, Round Rock and that north side uh, tech corridor what they call the Tech Ridge um, you can get that on, on 620 so that's again going out 71 um, and then after Bee Cave and Lakeway it will take you to Spicewood which is a very very popular area right now um, if you continue on it it goes out to Marble Falls and then after Marble Falls it'll take you to Lano and then Brady, I believe, and then again it goes northwest. Um, we'll actually take 71 for a pretty good ways when we drive from Austin to Colorado uh, here in a couple days when we take that Colorado trip. That's where we go. Um, but that's if you go 71 at the Y. Um, if you stay on 290 at the Y, you're going to continue mostly west um, and you're going to go, you know, the, the next major subdivisions, Belterra is in Dripping Springs ISD. Dripping Springs is another popular school district. Uh, Dripping Springs is where I live. Um, Belterra uh, High Point, uh, Ledgestone are the closest subdivisions to Austin and to the Southwest Tech Corridor um, that you can get into and, and be in Dripping Springs ISD. So that's why that area is very popular. There's also a lot of, uh, a lot of retail there uh, with Belterra Village Shopping Center. Um, after Belterra, you go, you know, your next major subdivisions are going to be... Um, Oh, shoot, I'm missing it. Uh, headwaters, and then you get into Dripping Springs where you have Calatera, Founders Ridge. Um, there's also some more exclusive gated subdivisions with acreage lots in there, um, Kirby Springs being one of those. And then you continue through Dripping Springs out to 90. It'll take you to Henley, which is kind of a wide spot in the road that's starting to get popular with people that are trying to get out of Dripping Springs. Um, and then it'll take you out to Johnson City. There's going to be a jog at Johnson City. Um, um, where you're going to go north on 281 to continue on 290. I know our roads are confusing, um, but then that's how you get out to Fredericksburg. Um, stay out on uh, on 290 on the other side of Johnson City, and that'll take you to Fredericksburg and what they call the Napa Valley of Texas. 
I personally hate referring to it as that because, um, you know, Fredericksburg's beautiful. The Texas Hill Country is amazing, but the wine's not Napa Valley wine. Sorry, I've had Napa Valley wine and Texas wines are not that good. Now, are they coming a long way? Absolutely. Um, William Chris kind of was the first one to put a lot of uh, a lot of wine tasters um, minds or to change wine tasters minds. But um, Twelve Fires Winery is in is in uh, Johnson City. Slate Theory. Those are some of some of our favorite. Um, and, and there's a ton of wineries out there at this point. So, you know, if you're visiting, this is how you would get to Fredericksburg from the airport, uh, coincidentally. All right, traffic is moving a little bit better, and you can see all the construction here on our left with the cranes and stuff. So probably in the next two years, this freeway is going to be open. This is going to move a lot better. Um, but as we're coming up to, um, Mo, or sorry, William Cannon and the Y, I told you I was going to bring you out to, oh, sorry, A2 Wheeler, I'm going to cut you off. As we come to the Y, Oak Hill is that area that's formed by the Y um, between 71 and 290. So technically, at this point, I don't want to bore you with sitting in traffic, so I will let you know. I have successfully gotten you to Oak Hill, um, really cool little area. Most of the houses in here were built kind of through the 80s, um, and it's really you know, outside of major traffic times, you know, I've been on the, on this video for 20 minutes from the airport and we've had some stop and go in here. So realistically, most of the houses in here are 20 minutes from the airport. They're 15 minutes from downtown. Um, really great area. If you need to commute to downtown, the school district is Austin ISD, but, um, the high school here in the school tract is pretty highly sought after, uh, Bowie high school. When I was a teacher, I taught here. My wife actually went to school at Bowie high school it opened in 88 it is still a very good school um, she then came back to teach at Bowie I think from 24 to 20 or 2004 to 2022 um, and we still have a lot of friends that are teachers at Bowie high school and the middle uh, elementary and middle schools are actually really good in this area so if you need something that's commutable to downtown or you want to be really close to that southwest tech corridor and you want good schools um, you might want to look up you know Bowie high school check the ratings see if they match with with what you're looking for but this area here at the at oak hill and at the y is a really really good location so at that i'm going to turn this around tell you again if this is the type of content that you're looking for by all means subscribe to my channel i hope i bring you value and if you're looking to move to this area um, i would love to serve you as your realtor guys we'll talk to you next time